Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another, what I hope is an exciting and interesting conversation, another Minecraft conversation about all things well-being. That is what Minecraft is about, right? Becoming the boss of our brain, which means, you know, mastering our thinking, because we, we, thoughts come first, feelings second, actions, behaviors last, so by changing our thinking, we literally change our lives, and this is how we get to a place of not only living our best life, but also finding inner peace, because you can't do that with a busy head. Just can't. I know that's me from the, in the Fast Mind Club saying that. So it might take a little extra work, you know. And, and remember, it's about progress, not perfection. You know, if we're a little more mindful and grateful today than we were yesterday, or a little bit more mindful and grateful than we uh, in the afternoon than we were in the morning, yeah, yeah, it's like a pat on the back. Good for you. Okay, so anyway, uh, today's discussion is about don't force things. Just don't force it. It's so nuts that we get so into forcing things. And we, what we want to do is become allowers. We want to become allowers, allowing our life to unfold exactly as it's meant to unfold. How do we do this, you say? Well, glad you asked. We do this by, by listening, by being still. And even if you don't have the good fortune of this vast acreage of woods, which isn't mine, it's, it's a this wonderful you know, uh, older gentleman caretakes this, this notch area. And he's just amazing. But anyway, I'm just so grateful for it. I don't even have words. Very few people up here. It's just so serene and peaceful. But even if you don't have that, we can be quiet virtually anywhere. I mean, you can be in the you know the, the middle of Manhattan and find a quiet spot, uh, you know, quiet in quotes, because you might hear some fire engines and stuff. But in your own, in your apartment or, or townhouse or whatever, we can find a quiet-ish spot in Central Park or whatever other major city. But the point is to unplug the drugs like... The, the laptop and the, and the cell phone and find quiet. This is how we listen. Like my good friend Oprah would say, listen to the whispers before they turn into bricks. So our lives are meant to unfold. There is a plan. Think about it. Whether if you choose to call it God, source, higher power, universe, whatever, there's a there's an there's a, an authentic path just for you. That's all yours. We can't. We can try to do what other people do and force it, but that isn't going to work out for us. So, um, I have an example actually of. Of this, I was listening to Abraham Hicks, of uh, I, I, inter intermittently with all the other ones I listened to. Right, this was a few months ago, I think, or a few weeks ago. I don't know. And there was there was a woman on there talking about this, where she was at her job, where she'd been for some years, and it really wasn't good for her. She wanted out. She wasn't making a lot of money. But that wasn't really it. There were some toxics there. There were some toxics there that were, um, you know, just doing all kinds of microaggressions and being demeaning and this and that. It was getting harder and harder for her to go. And the, the conflict entered when, um, you know, she had, or not entered, but was there when she had a couple of friends there amongst the toxics. The toxics were also bothering them, but she was trying to stay because she kind of didn't want to, like, abandon ship when there were, uh, you know, a couple people she did like there. But she was really just forcing, forcing, forcing because everything in her was saying, get out of here. It's not healthy for you. And they'll find their way, too. It's not like you don't care about them. But all the feeling badly for them isn't going to get her in a healthy place, right? If you think about it, it's not a situation of being a bad person. It's a situation of find, follow your feeling and find out what's good for you and they need to do the same. So she didn't do that because she was being driven by the guilt of potentially abandoning the, the couple of good people there. And so, you know, weeks went by, weeks went by. She's getting more and more miserable. It's taking a hit on her self-esteem. So what do you think happened? She got herself fired. And she was, of course, relieved, but he, she, what she didn't get was there was a whole underlying conversation saying, get out, get out, get out, get out, get out. The universe is hearing it, or source of the capital S, however you want to say. And so the universe listened, like, you're right, it's not healthy, you need to get out. And since you can't do it yourself, we're going to give throw you a little life raft, and you're fired. And then she was relieved, and she was doing a whole other good thing. She was pointed in a different direction, and she was then then happier and her self esteem was on was in recovery mode so that's that's what happens think about it with relationships when we try to force a relationship we know isn't good for us we all know how that goes it can be romantic and that explodes or it can be just a, a friendship that we've outgrown or maybe um you know we're, we're uh, friends with somebody who's ex extremely negative and maybe getting more negative and it doesn't mean we can't send the love to that person you know just send the love to that person you know, if we don't detach from that from that negative energy, we're allowing it to bring us down too, and that isn't helping anybody. You know, we and then the, we, you know, we, our vibe comes down to all the you know, like the low emotional setting with jealousy, envy, 
guilt, shame is the worst one, right? Instead of riding that high frisbee where we are, we can't like feel badly enough to help that person rise up. It doesn't work like that. So we don't want to allow ourselves, you know, to, to, to kind of, you know, sink to it. I don't mean sink as we're better than them. It would be very clear. That's not what I mean. Cause they'll, they'll find their way. It's just when we're at a high vibe, emotional place, we don't want to sink to a lower vibe, emotional place. It doesn't help them or us. So the thing is, when we force stuff, it's just no good. So I've talked about my friend, Tom, the synchronicity guy, friend and colleague. We're doing all kinds of projects together, which is very cool. In fact, you can see, if you've noticed, he's on, he's on the channel, but we've, he and I have done, I don't know, at least three or four episodes now about all things well-being, meaning and purpose and all kinds of stuff. So he's the green light guy, right? That's what I talk about. So he says, pay attention to the green lights. What Oprah would say, the whispers. Listen to the whispers before they turn into bricks. Like that woman, she didn't listen that Abraham Hicks was interviewing. Didn't listen to the whispers, whispers, whispers of get out of here. It's bad, bad for you spiritually, emotionally, every kind of way. And so it turned into bricks and she got fired. It all worked out in the end, but you can do that much, much less painfully. We don't try to force things. Think about it. I'm also, just to be clear, I'm not talking about as far as uh, like with running, let's say like, you know, physically speaking and physical fitness wise, you've started a new routine and you're running a mile and a half, then you push yourself another half a mile. That's a good thing. That's just being physically fit and, and that's not the same. We're talking about forcing things when we are clearly bumping up against red lights, just like that woman was with the job. Or, or um, you know, so I've had it happen to me with uh, social situations. There was one uh, a while back, and it just clearly wasn't meant for me to go. And I, and I, I could kind of feel it, honestly. When I look back, I'm like, I kind of knew I wasn't going, even though I didn't know no at the time. I kind of felt that I wasn't going. Like, it just wasn't going to happen. I had a presentation to do, and the social thing was another, you know, hour away from there, and I was going to be an hour away. From the, my husband was an hour away the other direction, so he was going to, if he was going to meet me, if he were going to meet me, he was going to have to take a separate car, and then in walks my husband the day before, and he had all this stress at work, and so uh, it all just, we couldn't do it. It was two cars, and he had to deal with this immediate thing at his, at his, at his work, which he was kind of in charge of and it just was not meant to happen for whatever reason i don't know okay but it wasn't meant to happen and so thankfully i'm in a place where i, I i've learned very I, i've learned to listen attentively like ultra like i'm hyper vigilant of of the whispers at this point in my life listen because there is a reason that that just was not meant to happen and so uh, you got to listen to the red lights, the same as you listen to, to the green lights. Not listening to the red lights lands us in a heap of trouble. And not listening to the green lights also has us missing out on opportunity and you know, all kinds of opportunity. Not just jobs, but also friendships and, you know, fun times and good things happening, you know, being spontaneous. And so uh, my friend Tom, this is where I was going with this, is he showed me a picture, which I thought he got off. It looks so professional. And uh, as mentioned, he did his whole, dissertation, his whole dissertation on synchronicity. I just love listening to Tom. And it's amazing how, how stuff, synchronicity, synchronized things happen to me before and after I see him, which is really wild, like weird bumper stickers. It's just crazy. But anyway, his friend had gave, uh, gave him this picture down in Florida when it was just must have been very early in the morning or something because it was a major, not a highway, but like a major Florida roadway, let's say that. And he took, and it had to be either, it had to be very early in the morning because you would have seen more cars. And the green lights were just all lined up like for what looks like miles, not miles, but it's a long time. This green light after green light after green light. And he took the picture to send it to my friend Tom, knowing that he's so interested in, in synchronicity and, and how things just seemingly tend to just happen you know, in the sink, so to speak. So when I saw that picture, I'm like, wow, doesn't that really illustrate it metaphorically? Because think about what happens and how it feels when you when the timing's right in, in regular traffic, when like you just, you know, you just hit it and then the, the, the lights are all timed and then, then you're just rolling through the next one and the next one and the next one. And it just, feel, it just feels good. Like, wow, I'm in, I'm, I'm, you know, at one with the green lights. And think about also if we blow through a red light, what happens? You might get lucky. To, I don't believe in luck. Let's just say you might um, be fortunate to not get a ticket, not crash, not T-bone somebody, right? Do that again and again and again. Eventually, you're going to get tickets and crash. And it'll, it'll be cost you money. You might get hurt. You might hurt somebody else. And, and so then that metaphor is a really good one. When we force drive, you know, pushing through a red light, nothing good comes out of that. 
we, you know, when the, when the, as the green lights line up, man, we are all set to roll. You know, it's just, it's just, just the timing. And so, so that green light picture is what really what we're talking about. When we're talking about alignment because, and we know by how we feel. Oprah would say that. Tom would say that. I would say that. We're all in the same friendship circle. Oprah just doesn't know. Because you know by how you feel, which she has said a lot with her own career path, because it, it just it feels right. Because it's when our personality and our signature, our signature strengths, our personality and our signature strengths line up with that with which we were meant that which we were meant to do on this earth. Because there's what's one thing we've all got. It's just the, whatever we're meant to do lines up with our personality, and our signature strengths, and it's like those green lights just. Shoo, and it just feels great. And you know that you are exactly where you're supposed to be. You're exactly, you're doing exactly what you're supposed to do. And you just feel at one with it. Whether you're at one with, uh, you know, making videos. Whether you're at one with writing. Whether you're at one with teaching. Whether you're uh, at one with presenting. I've actually got a presentation later today. And I'm so excited. I can't stand it. Because I love presenting to people on all things well-being and, um, and and being at one with the presentation and all the people in the auditorium I, I can't even wait because I know that it's I just feel it it's just a feeling thing I'm this is what I'm meant to be doing today and I'm excited so there you go green lights do not force anything we want to become allowers we want to allow our lives to unfold not passively be defeated no allowing for the green lights so that we know which way to go and acknowledging the red lights so we know which way not to go that's how it works right now g's found the green lights to be in the brook okay this is kimberly quinn signing off from the notch in northern vermont have a mindful day